Hello everyone today in microbial carcinogenesis we are going to see helicobacter pylori helicobacter pylori is the first bacterium which is classified as a carcinogen and it is implicated in the genesis of two cancers gastric adenocarcinoma as well as gastric lymphoma now what is the mechanism it increases the epithelial cell proliferation in a background of chronic inflammation Second, the inflammatory environment contains some genotoxic compounds like the reactive oxygen species. Third, because there is a uh, constant uh, gastritis, it may lead to chronic gastritis, which may lead to gastric atrophy, then intestinal met metaplasia, then dysplasia, and then it will lead to anaplasia cancers. Okay, so dysplasia, then cancer, so gastritis, atrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia, cancer. Next, Helicobacter pylori genome. It contains a gene which is directly implicated in carcinogenesis, and we have seen in the strains uh, associated strains associated with adenocarcinoma, and they have shown to contain a pathogenicity island. And this pathogenicity island contains a gene CAG A gene. CAG A gene stands for cytotoxin associated A gene. Cytotoxin associated A gene. Although uh, how how it works, uh, we know that H pylori is non-invasive. But CAG A gene it penetrates into the gastric epithelial cells, and this CAG A gene it initiates a signaling cascade and will mimic like unregulated growth factor stimulation. So the growth there will be an unregulated growth. Okay, so because of this CAG A gene there will be a cascade of signaling processes and will mimic as if there is a growth factor stimulation. There is a continuous growth factor stimulation. Okay. So the main mechanism I've seen this one that gastritis atrophy and then because we know with there is a gastritis the epithelium will change it will there will be metaplasia and then dysplasia then cancer. Now uh, what is the mechanism? This is was the mechanism of adenocarcinoma. Now let us see the mechanism of maltomas or gastric B cell lymphomas. H pylori infection will lead to production of H pylori reactive T cells. And these T cells, we know, T cells stimulate a polyclonal B cell proliferation. Now, with chronic infection, there will be unknown mutations which will be acquired. So now, this polyclonal B cell will convert into a monoclonal maltoma. Okay, but this monoclonal maltoma is still dependent upon T cell stimulation for the B cell pathway of stimulation of NF kappa B. Still, the NF kappa B stimulation depends on T cell stimulation. So this B cell growth depends on continuous T cell stimulation. Okay, so at this stage, we can eradicate the H pylori by giving antibiotic therapy and with this antibiotic, we can cure a cancer, cure lymphoma. How? By removing the antigenic stimulus, by removing H pylori, which is the stimulus for, uh, T, for T cells. So the stimulus is removed, the antigen is removed. So there will be no continuous stimulation by the T cells to the B cells. So there will be, uh, this will stop and this will die. Okay, but uh, this can be treated only at this stage, but at later stage with additional mutations being acquired. Now, example like translocation 1118, translocation 1118, if it is acquired, it will cause the NF kappa B to be constitutively active. Now, this NF kappa B pathway does not require any antigenic stimulation as it was requiring before T cell activation. So now there is no T cell activation is required. Now, no more T cell stimulation is required. So maltoma will require no antigenic stimuli now. Now it's uncurable. So it will lead to maltomas. So these are the two uh, step mechanism in maltomas. Okay. And uh, so this is all about H. pylori. H. pylori is a, uh, is a bacteria which is involved in carcinogenesis. Thank you.